there is zero difference, absolutely zero difference between high fructose corn syrup and table sugar as far as health is concerned. All right, guys, I'm going to sit down and chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this today. And this, for some reason, this is a topic where people don't get it because there's so many myths and rumors and it's, it's so much nonsense. Well, you know, there's a slightly different bond with the high fructose corn syrup, but it's a slightly higher concentration of fructose. Um, it's, it's more refined. We've been making table sugar for hundreds of years, right? All these excuses instead of just chemically looking at it and understanding the pathways. And what I'm trying to tell people, they are both equally bad and particularly in excess. And I'm not saying in moderation for people's environment, well, you can't tell people not to eat. Well, I can tell people not to eat these. I generally don't eat these. These are things I eat on cheat days or very rare occasions, meaning it is unlikely more than once or twice a month that I'm going to eat something with table sugar in it at all, okay? So yeah, it's totally doable. But let's set that aside. We're talking about in excess. Uh, and in excess, they're identical. There is no difference. No difference. And here's why. Here's why. You have to understand why they're bad. And if you understand why they're bad, you'll understand that they're not different. At least not practically. Yes, on paper, there's like a 3 to 5% difference. But it practically, that's a dose mismeasurement, Right? They're so close that it's irrelevant from a practical perspective because you can't eyeball the difference. So if you were to be spooning them into something with a spoon uh, and then eating it. So when we say that, that's what we're talking about. So here's why. What is the concern with fructose itself? The effect it has on the liver. In other words, refined sugars get into the bloodstream through the upper intestine, not the lower. Whereas in more, a lot of more natural sugars that are found in whole foods, it's nothing to do with the fact they're natural. I, we could make a synthetic sugar that does this exact same thing, okay? We could make a completely synthetic product that does this in the lab. But when fruit and other things or foods that contain it do this, they're in a whole matrix of food when we eat them. They have fiber and all this stuff in them, unless we've removed the fiber, in which case now we've made it a refined sugar, right? We, squeeze, we get all the fiber out of the orange juice, so congratulations. You've just basically made table sugar. All right. So while all of that's in there and in the matrix of the whole food, we don't absorb that much of it in the upper intestine. They reach the lower intestine. If you've got healthy gut flora, it ferments, it turns it into glucose. We thrive on glucose. It's our primary fuel source. None of these concerns from the fructose are concerns with glucose. It's, it is not the same concern. It's a totally different chemical. So when it reaches uh, the, the lower intestine, it gets turned into glucose, and that's, that's what happens to it. Okay. When we have these refined sugars, when, as soon as they hit the upper intestine, the, almost the entire thing gets absorbed there into the bloodstream as fructose. Okay, It's like a even 50-50 mix on table sugar of, of glucose versus fructose. And then the high fructose corn syrup is something like uh, you know a, a 53-47, something like that. Very, very minuscule difference. It's, it's less than 10% difference though. Not enough to be overly worried about. The effect is the same because the body can't tell them apart once they hit the stomach. Okay, that's what people forget. Once your stomach acids break them down, it is a very simple bond. And as soon as it hits the stomach acid, both of these turn into just a big pool of fructose and a big pool of glucose. It's purely a matter of how much glucose is there. So in other words, to get the amount of fructose that's in 50 grams of uh, high fructose corn syrup, you need like 51 grams of table sugar. The same amount is going to hit the upper intestine, and that is what we care about. How much free fructose is floating around to hit the upper intestine and hit the bloodstream? Because once it hits the bloodstream, we have an enzyme that deals with it. But the amount of that enzyme that we produce, it can also convert it into glucose and cleave it over, is very, very limited. We don't have a lot of it as a species because we don't have a history of a large exposure to, to large amounts of fructose hitting our bloodstream. Because it's a poison to us, by the way, but our body is pretty good at handling it because we do eat it. So our, our gut flora handles it first. Usually whatever gets through almost all of it, that enzyme handles, handles it. 
The amount you have varies from person to person, though, so it's not like a set amount, unless you were to somehow go get it tested and measured. Uh, so you don't know how many grams it can handle. So anything that's left reaches the liver. It is a poison. It, the liver handles it through the same pathway it handles alcohol. So in other words, if you consume alcohol and fructose, the burden on the liver stacks because it's the same sort of burden. The end result, uh, fatty liver, insulin resistance, you see where we're going? All these concerns. That is the problem. The problem with these two refined sugars is the exact same problem as far as your organs are concerned if you drink alcohol. They're the exact same problem. So the equivalent of comparing these two substances is comparing 80 proof liquor with uh, 84 proof liquor. Yes, technically it's a different, but it's so minor that it doesn't matter because it's about chronic excess. Like the, the, the fact if you're consuming enough of one to create a problem and you're consuming similar amounts of the other to replace it, there's no noticeable difference. You're having an excess of refined fructose reaching your bloodstream and liver consistently and you are going to suffer health problems as a result of this because of the burden on the liver. You're going to have uh, deposits of liver fat. You're going to have deposits of visceral fat. You're going to start developing insulin resistance. Okay? Due to what's happening at the liver and then your pancreas and everything. That is the issue. So if you understand these things, there's no difference. And, and it's so frustrating because people, oh, yeah, yeah, that's bad, but then they'll eat the other and they act like it's some sort of magical replacement. And I mean, people do, I hear it all the time, oh, I, I go get Mexican Cokes from Mexico because they have real table sugar instead of that high fructose corn syrup. You eat, it's the same thing, okay? Just one of them happens to have been made from sugar cane that we milled and process, right? We've been making it in the U.S. for centuries. And uh, <laughs> the other is made from corn, okay? They're both a refined sugar, okay? And, and so again, this idea that it's better than the other is ludicrous. They're both equally bad. They're both for equally bad for the exact same reason. One of them just has a tiny amount more than the other. And people say, well, that tiny amount matters. Probably not. It probably isn't going to matter in the grand scheme of things because you're still loading the same substance in excess into your body. And that's the problem. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.